most common criticisms that classic RPGs receive is that their storylines are always pre-calculated, so their biggest moments invariably play out in the same predictable order. Well, not so with Live Alive from Squaresoft. This one very literally gives the player full discretion over the order of the game's scenarios, all of which are thematically different and exciting to see in the context of a single game. While Live Alive was never officially released in North America, the great folks at Aeon Genesis translated the game in 2008. This now allows all of us to enjoy this awesome game via a translation patch. And it's a true blessing because this was one of the greatest RPGs North American fans missed out on in the SNES era. When you first start up the game, you're given the immediate freedom to select from one of seven different scenarios, each of which features a different protagonist that the scenario centers upon. Each chapter plays as something of a standalone game, and the player can complete the scenarios in any order. The sci-fi scenario, for instance, features a robot named Cube that was created on a spaceship. As the ship makes its way to Earth, there are many surprises that befall the crew, and it's up to Cube to save the day. With characters named Kirk and Darth, one can imagine what influenced this one. There's also some really crazy surprises in this scenario, but I shouldn't spoil them here. Another chapter takes place in feudal Japan, and you control a ninja named Oboro with incredible powers. Here, the villain Ode and his minions plan to thwart the ninjas and dominate Japan. The chief objective is to invade an enemy fortress, use stealth to evade the many traps and enemies, and stop Ode. The wrestling scenario features a martial artist named Masaru, who is training to be the world's greatest fighter. He enters a global tournament to test his might against various competitors, including, uh, Hulk Hogan? This one doesn't have an overworld to wander around in, and is comprised simply of a series of matches. One of my favorites was the Cowboy Chapter, which is influenced by the Wild West in America. Here, you take control of Sundown, who works to set up traps to take out the town's gang of ruffians. The protagonist doesn't say much, but using traps was just a ton of fun, and it was pretty hysterical when you set them off against the Crazy Bunch gang. In the Mecha Chapter, you play as a dude named Akira that can read minds. With the help of his psychic powers, Akira sets out to save an orphan that has been taken by a biker gang. The futuristic flavor here was distinct from the robot one, and it was quite fun in its own right. The monk scenario features Shin Chan Chuan, a fighting master who seeks to teach his skills to one of his three pupils before he dies. In this one, you seek out his students, train them in combat, help a local village cure a mysterious disease, and deal with an evil clan that attempts to hinder the monk's plans. Perhaps the most unique is the caveman chapter, where you play as Pogo. In this chapter, there's no actual dialogue, and you just set out to solve a series of squabbles between caveman tribes that communicate only by pictures and gestures. Even without an actual script, there's some real themes at play here, including exile and cooperation. After completing all seven of the original scenarios, Live Alive provides a true surprise to the player by introducing a medieval-themed eighth chapter. In this scenario, a new hero named Orstad must save a kidnapped princess from the demon king Odio. This one concludes with an incredibly surprising twist. This chapter was by far my favorite, and it is dark. You'll see why when you play through it. In the final chapter, the player chooses a main character from among all those in the previous eight scenarios. Here, the paths of all the characters intersect with each other. There's a lot of surprises in the conclusion, and I won't spoil anything, but I will say the game is definitely worth playing to this point. In fact, it just keeps getting better and better the closer you get to the end. The storyline sequencing feature wasn't the only innovative aspect of Live Alive. For combat, Squaresoft ventured away from the standard system adopted by the Final Fantasy and Romancing Saga series. Here, all the battles take place on a 7x7 grid. Characters can move around on their turn at will, but during movement, enemies can move and attack you as well. Each character has unique attacks, all of which have special distance and direction requirements. Some attacks have an effect radius that takes up many squares, whereas others only focus on a single square. The way the combat plays out is almost like chess, and Live Alive definitely requires you to think on your feet and take position into consideration. It's strategy-oriented and has some elements similar to what you can find in Tactics Ogre. There are also no magic points of any type, but there are certain drawbacks built into each attack. For instance, some moves take some time to charge up, and you can be attacked by enemies in the meantime. Like the Romancing Saga series, your characters return to full hit points after all battles, a welcome change that eliminated the need for tedious inventory management. And speaking of inventory, there actually aren't many weapons or armors that characters can buy, and there are very few stores. You gain almost all armor and weapons in the game from hidden locations or defeating enemies. One of the most glorious aspects of the Aeon Genesis translation was its ingenious decision to use a different font for each scenario each of which was crafted to fit the theme of that scenario specifically. 
This was a creative decision that added flavor to the localization, and I definitely wanted to bring attention to it. Also, some of the text in Live Alive is downright hilarious, and you can tell that the translators worked hard to make this translation a great success. Aeon Genesis really deserves a lot of credit for creating such an awesome translation. I can't stress that enough. Like several other Squaresoft RPGs, the soundtrack to Live Alive is one of its greatest assets. In fact, I was quite surprised to learn that it wasn't arranged by the legendary composers Nobuo Uematsu or Yasunori Mitsuda. Instead, the score was created by Yoko Shimomura, who worked with Capcom prior to Squaresoft. Her work on this one was just really well done. Live Alive's soundtrack contains 41 distinct songs. I was very impressed how well the tunes were matched to their respective scenarios, which must have been a challenge. The main theme of the game hits you right away with an epic punch and just sets the mood for the story. The sound of Shinobi, which plays during the Secret Order scenario, is also fantastic. Also noteworthy is Nice Weather, ain't it? Which was the overworld theme in the Caveman scenario, and it's still stuck in my head now. Finally, Sundown's theme, and frankly all the music in the Wild West chapter for that matter, is excellent. Several tunes from Oersted's story were also memorable as well. There's so many amazing songs in Live Alive, and overall, they complemented the characteristics of each chapter. This is a very underrated soundtrack. In general, Live Alive's graphics are pretty comparable to what you would find in Final Fantasy V, but I'd say the graphics in battle are quite a bit better. The visuals won't blow you out of the water or anything, but they're definitely respectable. The quality that stands out the most in this area is the battle animations, because many are completely unique, and this is something a lot of the other SNES RPGs didn't do. My one gripe with Live Alive is that the game is especially short for an RPG. This is presumably because the distinct scenarios required a lot of data. Because of this, you can definitely beat the game in 15 to 20 hours. Regardless, I thought the variety that the game offers is a fair trade-off for the lack of playtime. It was a true shame that the West missed out on this one because Live Alive might have been one of the best RPGs Squaresoft released outside of their flagship series. All respects paid to Chrono Trigger, of course. The characters are likable, the storylines were well designed, and the game concludes in such an interesting way. There are also some really comical moments which added life to the game and was a real pleasure to see. In terms of Japan-only SNES RPGs, I rank it up there with games like Seiken Densetsu 3, Far East of Eden Zero, and even Final Fantasy V. If you never got a chance to play this one at the time, I highly recommend it. If you like this review and remember Live Alive, leave a comment below about the most memorable aspect of the game to you. If you like my videos, please subscribe to my channel and click the bell below to be alerted upon the addition of new ones. Also, please consider supporting my channel via YouTube's Join feature to receive member exclusives, such as advanced videos and complete video transcripts.